So I'm currently working on turning my garage, which is big, into an epic home cinema, but that's quite a long-term project, there's still a lot of work to be done there, things that I'm waiting on, etc. But recently, I had a bit of a surge of energy and I wanted to do something that involved moving heavy stuff and, you know, plugging things in and vacuuming and all that icky, workish stuff that you never actually feel like doing. I felt ready to do it, so long as I got a home theatre out of it at the end. So I decided to turn this otherwise useless little space in my house into a micro home cinema and I'm blown away with how well it turned out. Okay, so this space is about 1.5 by 1.5 meters. That's just under 5 by 5 feet. It comes out to 24 square feet. And some people might say, well, that's ridiculous. It's not big enough for a theater. You might as well wear headphones. And to that I would say, people see, as everything gets smaller, including the distance you are from the screen and the speakers themselves, the the difference that the position of the speaker or the source of the sound actually makes increases rather than decreases. So the difference between how this sounds and how this sounds is extremely different for me, but not very different for someone just a few feet away. So when you're sitting less than 1.5 meters from your speakers, there are two advantages to this. One is that you can listen at much lower volumes and still have proper surround sound. And the other is that the spatial surround effect is increased. And there's a third, which is sort of the other side of the coin from the first, which is that equipment that would be strained in a decent sized room can still sound good and and look good when it comes to the display, which I'll come back to later. So the first thing I needed to do was clear out this mess. Now, I already had all the gear, receivers and speakers, etc. I have that stuff already, so it was tempting to start putting stuff in straight away. <laughs> But in such a near field environment with these hard walls, it is a bit of a problem. So I wanted to get something soft on the walls to help with the sound. And I wanted to use dark material to help with it. <laughs> like being dark. And I also wanted to cover the hole in the wall over there, which my son was extremely concerned about. What is the problem? Yeah, there is a hole in the wall. It's not good. A hole. It's okay. Now, as you can see, I'm not too worried about the condition of this room. The walls in this house have always been in horrible condition and one day they'll all be renovated with new sheetrock and building this, that's good news because it means I can screw into them both for the curtains and if necessary, the speakers. So let's do it. This black polar fleece stuff is good enough. I already had it from two years ago when I made a short film with a ton of it and it absorbs a lot of light. Now I know people are gonna say it's not sound absorption and it's not hyperwave resonance, tesseract certified and all this crap. It doesn't matter, okay? I'm not going to all that effort to create the ultimate home theater just for one person or two people. I'm making something quick, easy and cheap that will be an enjoyable space to watch things and gives this otherwise useless space a home. So I'm using some cheap fabric that I already had. If you don't have any, just get cheap dark fabric. Should be about $2 a meter and it makes a very big difference. The most surprising part of which I'll come back to later. Now another really cool part of this for me is getting to use some of the otherwise not particularly useful gear that I have because I have like a bazillion speakers, a lot of nice ones too, and a few very compact ones. But before I get to that, I'll just explain this high-tech TV stand here. I had a sort of landscape mode bookshelf that I was planning on using, but when looking at it again, I realized that it would make the TV sit very high, so I'd be craning my neck too much. So I seriously just walked around my house, particularly in the garage and the basement, just looking at all the old crappy bits of furniture that we have. They're all too common in this house, unfortunately. But I eventually settled on this tiny coffee table. Now this table really was perfect once I solved a tiny little problem. As you can see, in its correct form, the TV's feet sit just wide of the table. Obviously it'd be great if the TV was on one of those proper base stands that runs the whole way along the bottom. But this is a cheap TV that I bought on clearance like six years ago when everything was going smart. And although it's a 55 inch 4K TV, it was was crazy cheap because it had no smarts, so to speak. So it's actually quite a high quality display that just doesn't have an OS, and in many ways I prefer that. But that doesn't solve the issue of the feet, so I had a very long think about it, and I eventually put the feet on the opposite ends the wrong way round. I inverted the feet. 
Now I know it looks a bit weird, but the size of the table actually makes it a bit easier to stomach, almost like it's just a weird design on the TV, and when you're watching, the feet are invisible anyway. Even though I was using this table somewhere else and now I have to replace it, I'm really happy with this choice because you're hardly going to believe how perfectly it's sized, which brings me to what goes under it. Because just like speakers, I also have a number of options for receivers and subwoofers. Initially I went with this Pioneer VSX1020, which is a decent medium to high-end model from a couple of years ago. It has 7.1 and it's basically everything I need. It lasted about two movies and then just kept turning off. So yeah, probably a capacitor and I'll fix it one day. But it is not this day. The subwoofer was also a pioneer. It was a six inch. It was just one of those generic home theater in a box ones. And that worked well enough. But when I went looking through my gear to find a replacement receiver, I also remembered another subwoofer option that I had. And that was a Paradigm eight inch. Some of you will know Paradigm and know that that is a significantly more serious subwoofer. Shelf price would be something like eight or nine times the pioneer. But long story short, someone gave it to me because it was broken and I fixed it, but to do so I needed to pry away the fascia. So now it looks like this. It sounds top notch, but when it looks like this, the best option is just to use it rather than try to convince someone that it's worth actual money. But until now, I haven't had anywhere to really use it. The receiver that I ended up going with is just a little bit of overkill for this space. It's a Yamaha RXV3073, which is their flagship receiver from around 2014, and I do mean flagship. Often when people say flagship, they mean it's very good, but the 3073 was the best integrated receiver, possibly even on the market back then, and it shows. I'll get to the sound in a minute, but immediately I noticed usability was so much better than the Pioneer. Changing things like which speakers you're using and what level they they're at. All of that is very easy and very clear. You're never in any doubt as to what you're doing. I really like this receiver. I know it's overkill for this space, but I do have another reason for using it. And that is that, as I mentioned, I am building a bigger home cinema and I want to use it in that one day. But until then, I'd rather be using it in a clean, dry space like this, rather than trying to store it somewhere and hoping that it survives. If in, say, six months, the worst happens and it does die as well, then at least I spent this this time using it, which is more than I can say for some of my less fortunate equipment. Now in terms of pairing under my high-tech coffee table system, look at this fit. Width-wise, you could barely ask for a neater amount of room left, but I genuinely didn't expect the subwoofer to fit under the table height-wise, and my hesitation was well-founded because look at this clearance. I know you guys don't care, but I love that there is less than two millimeters allowing me to use my Chopper Paradigm subwoofer in this tiny setup. And the improvement in sound was immediately noticeable. I changed the subwoofer and the receiver at the same time, so I can't tell you exactly how much difference just one of the components made. I suspect that the bigger difference is to do with the subwoofer, because the speakers are small, they are high quality for their size, but the reality is bigger speakers have an easier time making a better sound. So in lieu of bigger speakers, a larger and higher quality subwoofer normally makes a big impact, and that's what I think I'm hearing here. I didn't have the option for bigger speakers. I own dozens, but any bigger than these just don't fit, unless they were to go above the TV, which would be noticeable in terms of soundstage. In these close quarters, any difference in height is more obvious, and if the speakers were any bigger, standing them also becomes a problem because the stands would be bigger, and that just pushes everything further away from the wall. So unless or until I get a slightly smaller TV, these are really the biggest speakers that are feasible. Oh, by the way, I know they look new, but I bought them pre-owned from a guy who'd been sent the wrong ones, and then the company never asked for them back, so they were very cheap, and I've only just opened them now. For the center speaker, I didn't use the one from this set because I don't love the design of that one, and I had this kind of orphan speaker. I don't have any of its family. It doesn't go with anything else. It's the smallest of the Wharfdale Diamond 9 center speakers, and it's just a bit bigger than the other four in this setup, which is exactly how I like it. The center speaker is doing the majority of the work, but I don't love the idea of a giant center speaker dominating the rest of them, even if that works out sounding perfect. I just don't like there being a huge mismatch in size. It just bothers me. It doesn't feel right. This is perfect for what I'm trying to do. And that brings me to what I'm sure some of you are wondering, which is how it all sounds. Well, look, I was genuinely blown away by how good this sounds, really. I was expecting to have to sit here and say, look, it's not that great, but I wasn't using this space, so what do you expect? But 
I can't believe that I didn't do this four years ago. Once I heard it, I was like, what have I been waiting for? Because it's been in for about three weeks now, and I've literally averaged more than a movie a day, I would say, because I just can't help myself. I watch one thing, and I just want to watch something else because it sounds so friggin' good. My son and I have watched the entire extended Lord of the Rings trilogy. One film that I'd almost call a new benchmark for me was Fury. I'd not seen it before. I thought the film was okay, but the sound was phenomenal. There's another gun, who's got eyes on it? What I'm most blown away by is just how seamless the surround effect is. Assuming the movie is well mixed and I haven't had a bad one yet, I feel that in other home theater setups I've had, including the one that I currently have downstairs, I don't hear very much spatial representation until I suddenly hear it like far too much. Like I won't hear the surround speakers at all and then suddenly one thing will be very obviously coming from this speaker or this speaker and that's not immersive, it's actually distracting. I think it's probably to do with the surround speakers being further away and then having to be turned up to compensate for that but then when something is sent directly just to that speaker it's suddenly very obvious whereas in this tiny set up here, I feel like I can always hear a complete surround environment and then I can also hear things sort of go past me just as if they were happening on screen but out of screen if that makes sense. Like true surround sound should be, I could genuinely list 20 to 30 moments that have felt so much more engaging and immersive for me as a result of watching on this setup. But I want to mention the TV really quickly because I know some home theater enthusiasts are going to be like, oh, it's not OLED and HDR and hyperbole induced eternal definition and all that garbage. Like, it's all BS, right? I'm not suggesting that there are not improvements in technology and that they can't make things look better. They can, but I will say that they can't do anything for bad content, right? Like, if you've got an 82-inch Samsung 8K and all the rest of it, and you're watching The Rise of Skywalker, say, then you're still watching a <laughs> movie, right? It doesn't matter. If I'm watching a good movie on this, I'm still having a better time. That's all I'm saying. And just on that, I will take a lesser TV in an enclosed viewing space with black along the walls any day over a higher end TV in a room that isn't completely black or that has bright stuff in it. Because this has been an absolute revelation in this space. I mean, it's not like I was watching stuff with the lights on before. I like a very dark room, but the problem is the display, whether it's a projector or a TV, it lights up everything around you as well. Down Downstairs in our lounge room, I was always kind of low-key bothered without realizing it by being able to see stuff like kids toys on the floor and snacks on the table and my keys and wallet, just stuff that is in the room because it's an ordinary room. I never realized how much benefit it would be to have the only thing that you can see be the screen. And then combine that with what is, in my opinion, really good surround sound. This is one of the most immersive environments that I've watched films and shows in. The most immersive was when I watched Tenet on the opening day of cinemas being open after lockdown lifted in Australia, but seemingly no one got the memo. So I was literally in the cinema by myself, it was the loudest freaking movie I've ever seen. That was extremely immersive. This is pretty close. I also forgot to mention the position of this in the house. It's a decent distance both from my two-year-old's bedroom and from our bedroom, and my my wife said that she could barely hear it, even when I was watching it what I thought was far too loud, so that's another advantage of such a small setup. Now I didn't expect it to be this close to what I wanted on basically the first go. So in terms of planned upgrades here, not really that many. I do want to get rid of these speaker stands which are kind of annoying and they're also unnecessarily heavy duty for these tiny speakers. I want to put the speakers up here like mount them on the wall up here which would also take care of the problem that when you're watching with two people the other person's head is in the way of each of the speakers on that side. If you, I'm sure you understand what I mean. Once I mount them up higher, that should take care of that a little bit. But before I do that, I want to sort out this material. It's just hanging loose at the moment, and most of the time it's completely fine. But I'd like it to be taut along the wall, because sometimes it can kind of fold a bit in front of the speakers. It's not noticeable in terms of sound, but I'm sure like technically it could be, and I think it would just be a little bit less annoying if it was just 
pinned or something. So I wanna do that before I mount the speakers up there. And I also want to add some height speakers up there in, in case you couldn't figure out where height speakers go, they go up. Technically, this receiver could actually take nine channels. So that would be two surround back speakers as well as the height speakers. But the problem with surround back speakers, firstly, I don't think that actually make very much difference and secondly they would have to be essentially where the camera is now which is out in the room which would defeat the purpose of having this kind of micro setup in this space so I think just height speakers would be good I've got some nice small JBLs that can sit up there very nicely and lastly I was going to say that I plan to cover the horrible ugly subwoofer fascia with some just black cloth but as you can see I've already done that now it's a horrible cut rate job so don't do anything like that if you're offended by poor cosmetics but I don't really care. It already looks a lot better than it did and it covers the power light just enough that it's not noticeable unless I'm looking right at it so I can still see if it's on. So anyway, this is obviously not endgame home cinema, but for me, this was basically free. And most people watching this, if you don't have this stuff already, you should be able to find most of it for a few hundred dollars max. It shouldn't even be four figures. To be honest, your receiver doesn't need to be anywhere near this good. A basic one should be fine. And if you've got a little nook like this or just a space in your house that just fills up with junk and you never do anything with it, you should give this a try. You might be surprised by how well it turns out. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can subscribe using the button that YouTube have put there for such activities. How convenient. I'll be doing more videos soon about my experiences with home theater and hi-fi. I'll see you then. Yeah.